You're watching a Nova Science Now video podcast. In case you haven't noticed, bugs have been running the world for almost half a billion years. They outnumber us 200 million to one and make up over 80% of known species. And yet, we spend over $31 billion a year trying to figure out better ways to kill them. What if one of these tiny pests had something amazing to tell us about physics? And if that's not enough, it might inspire a new breed of robotics too. Take a look. Spider-Man may have made one bug famous, but what about this guy? Yeah, they're slow. Okay, really slow. But snails do have some incredible superpowers. Spider-Man has nothing on these snails. MIT graduate student Randy Ewald is out to discover their secret. Check this out. They can even climb across razor blades. So what's the key to their superpowers? Slime. Slime. That's right. Slime has this very interesting property where it's a solid until you push on it hard enough. And instead of breaking like a typical solid material would, it actually flows. Snail slime is what's called a yield stress fluid. That means it can behave like a solid glue or a slippery lubricant, depending on how much pressure you put on it. So how does a snail actually move in this stuff? That's a good question. If you look underneath of a snail, you might be able to see waves traveling from the tail towards the head. Underneath each of these waves, it is liquefied the slime. So we want to test it, and so you need to find some way to motivate the snails to crawl. The thing that I like to use is beer. <laughs> so what do you do then? You get the snails drunk, and then <laughs> put what? Some, put some beer down on the end, uh, try to motivate them to crawl around a bit. Um, and as they're crawling around, I'll actually go in from behind uh, and scrape up the slime with a razor blade like this. Okay. Uh, and when I've collected enough, um, I'll test it. What Randy's found is that snail slime isn't your mild-mannered kind of matter. It's almost glue-like at rest but as soon as it's touched, it turns into a slippery fluid. Other things like mayonnaise, ketchup, and peanut butter have this property too. But so far, the closest thing Randy's found to snail slime is carbamer, a common thickening agent used in lotions and skin creams. So what are you trying to find? We'd like to find an artificial slime to use for robo-snail. That's right, Spider-Man. You've met your match, robo-snail. And he's not made up in some comic book either. Randy and his lab partner, Brian Chan, are building him in their lab. Uh, is actually moving like a real snail here? Yeah, one section is always moving forward. And that's exactly what a real snail does. Why would anybody want a robotic snail? Well, one is to build robots to explore the body. If we make really tiny robots, the fluids act like mud or slime, very viscous fluids. So a robot designed like this would be very good for that. That means RoboSnail's next quest might be inside you. Blood acts like snail slime on a small scale. So if Randy and Brian can perfect their work, RoboSnail's successors could enable some high-tech medicine, like remote-controlled chemo or targeted blood vessel repair, all inspired by nature's slowest little pest. So what if there was some sort of you know, chemical spill in here? Would you guys end up with super snail powers? Snail man. Snail man. <laughs> the power of slowness. <laughs> Not bad for a little guy who's gotten by half a billion years with a single foot. For more fun science stories, visit our website at pbs.org slash nova slash science now.